right, let's get going here, almost 7.30. Hopefully we don't have any technical difficulties like we did last week. So we'll see what happens here. Just give it a minute to get uh, spooled up here and to get people fired up. Like I said, hopefully we don't have the same problem that we had last week with the uh, bad weather. It was blowing about 90, but uh, fortunately we're past that. So hey guys, welcome back. Welcome back to uh, another one of our Thursday live seminars. I'm super stoked about this one. It is the end of May here in Marathon. And I'll tell you what, beautiful day today. The wind is finally laid down. We're still dealing with 10 to 15. Looks like that's gonna continue for a while. Uh, but at least it's not blowing 25 or 30, so certainly a big improvement there. Um, those of you just joining us, real quick, again, you can catch all of our weekly seminars on our uh, YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Florida Sport Fishing, and of course, they'll be in our feed uh, right here on our Instagram page as well. Um, again, if you're just joining us, we start our Thursday night gigs with a live, real-time Florida Keys fishing report. Just something brief to steer you in the right direction. If you're coming down here and you want to know what to fish for, if you want to know what's biting, what's hot, what's not, you know, we're not going to go over everything. Uh, but certainly we'll touch on a few different topics, a few different species. And I think what I'm going to do is just kind of elaborate on that fishing report a little bit more and actually give you a tip that will be applicable for you know each of those species. So, you know, without further ado, let's get right into that. And then our topic of conversation tonight is on circle hooks. Okay, this is really cool. Um, it's something that I believe still needs a lot of explanation, and some people still need to be convinced. You know, I recently fished with somebody, and he said he wouldn't touch a circle hook if it was the last hook you know that he could ever touch. Um, and he was just stuck on J-hooks, and what a mistake that is. So we'll get into that, uh, but again, let's start off with that fishing report. By the way, I'm Captain Mike, uh, host of Florida Sport Fishing TV. Uh, we are filming our new season right now, season 11. I can't believe we're going on 11 consecutive years. I'm super stoked about that, and that's going to start in July. But in the meantime, we've got our weekly reports, our weekly seminars, so let's get you hooked up here. We're gonna start on the shallow end, work our way offshore. Uh, bridges, the tarpon fishing, of course, it's the end of May here and that tarpon fishing is still on fire at the bridges. I wanna remind you that if you're fishing Bahia Honda, really the crab is gonna be the best bait that you can fish. And if you're fishing some of the other bridges up Port Almorada, um, mullet is gonna be more likely a better bait for you, okay? Those mullet, you know, can really withstand that current. You don't have to feed that line out. You can literally just leave them there and they'll just, you know, swim in that current. Whereas the crab, remember, you've got to constantly feed it out. Don't just leave that crab out there, lock it up, hold the rod in the rod holder, or just hold it in your hand and think you're going to get a bite because you're not, okay? Those tarpon are not dumb, nor the permit. And there are some permit mixed in with the tarpon, especially at the Honda Bridge right now. So, Keep that crab drifting out, get it way out there, reel it back up, check it, make sure everything looks good, feed it back out again. That's the name of the game. Do it enough times, you're gonna get crushed, I guarantee it, okay? Moving further offshore, the reef fishing is good. There's a lot of yellow tails around. I mean, look, if you're looking to put dinner on the table, there's no better way to anchor up on the reef, put some chum in the water. Every day is different. Some days you're gonna have a better yellow tail bite. You're gonna start to see a lot more mangroves in the mix, uh, some real nicer fish, especially as we're getting into June. Uh, but I'm definitely seeing a lot more mangroves mixed in, so keep that in mind. Uh, but black groupers, black groupers are on the reef right now. You know, I'll tell you what, there's some nice black groupers on the reef. The trick to catching those is just a big live bait, a really nice, healthy live bait. Could be a smaller snapper, okay? Could be a big grunt, uh, could be a mullet. Don't discount those mullet as a great black grouper bait. Could be a live ballyhoo, goggle eye. Blue runner, I mean, there's so many options, right? These black groupers are not that picky. If it's alive, if it looks good, really healthy, they're gonna crush it. So big live bait, heavy outfit, fished on the bottom, crank it up a couple feet off the bottom, a couple cranks off the bottom so that sinker's not bouncing in the bottom and doesn't get hung in the bottom. 
lock it up, and I'll tell you what, just wait for that rod to double over and crank like hell. Crank like hell to get them up. Further offshore, mutton snappers. Good mutton snapper bite these last few days here on the wrecks. Remember, we did have some crazy weather. It was blowing 25 to 30 for a while. Um, finally, over the last couple days, it's chilled out, mellowed out a little bit, and it seems to have turned on those mutton snappers on the wrecks. A lot of nice quality fish. Again, the key to those mutton snappers is long leaders. How long? Don't be afraid to fish a 70 foot leader, okay? 70 foot leader. You know, you want that bait off the bottom. You want it to flow real naturally like that behind the boat. Uh, and I'll tell you what, that's the ticket. That's the name of the game to fool those muttons. How do you fish a 70 foot leader? You don't want to hand line that fish, right? Well, we typically connect a 70 foot section of diamond presentation fluorocarbon to our braided running line, and we'll put a loop right in that braid where we connect it. Just a small loop, maybe four to six inches. And then we'll have a 12, 16 ounce bank sinker on a short trace of mono with a little snap, and you just snap it right on the loop after your bait's out. A perfect presentation, and when you reel it up, you just take it right off the loop, and now you can fight the fish right to the rod tip. It's just a much cleaner, more effective way of fishing for the muttons here in the Keys. Keep that in mind. The dolphin fishing, still good, and I'll tell you what, it's only getting better and better. There's a lot of dolphin out there right now. Fish anywhere from 300 feet to 900 feet. Certainly you can go even further than that, but that seems to be where the peak of the bite is, where the action has been in that three to 900 foot range. Look for the birds, okay? Look for the birds, the frigates, birds working close to the water. You can troll through the area. Uh, certainly you can live chum and throw live pilchards if you've got them. Um, but I don't know if anything's better than chucking live ballyhoos out there under the birds, especially for the bigger dolphin, the bigger bulls, the cows. They love those live ballyhoo. We talked about it in our seminar last week when we talked about bull dolphin, you know, and, and we touched on it. It's hard to be a live ballyhoo for a big dolphin. They, they just can't resist it. I'm actually going dolphin fishing tomorrow. Be spending the whole day out there. We're going to do a lot of trolling, a lot of running and gunning. Uh, so I'll keep you in the loop, and at the end of the day, just check out our page. I'll let you know how we did. Finally, even further offshore, sword fishing. Magic number lately is 1650. When the conditions are right, which they seem, you know, again, the wind is calming down. The conditions are good. If you can get out there without getting crushed, uh, 1650 seems to be the magic depth. Remember, don't fish one rod. Make sure you fish at least two, you know, a buoy rod is really an important part of your overall swordfish spread. You know, at a bare minimum, guys are going out there fishing two rods, the tip rod and then the buoy rod, okay? And keep in mind that buoy rod is set up off the bottom. So you've got one bait that might be 50 to 100 feet off the bottom, and then you've got the buoy rod that could be as much as 500 feet off the bottom. And you can play with those differences yourself and get fine-tuned and dialed in. This isn't a swordfish seminar, but again, the trick is to have a couple of baits in the water. Um, but there's a lot to that, you know, especially with the tackle that you're fishing, you know, the crew that you have on the boat. If you can only fish one, do it. But if you do have that crew and you do have the right gear, don't be afraid to fish two rods and fish that buoy rod way off the back of the boat there, okay? Now, Let's get into our topic here. Again, you know, really want to talk about this circle hooks. You know, a number of years ago, I don't know, 10 years ago, let's just say, give or take, nobody was fishing circle hooks, you know, but circle hooks have been around for a really, really long time. They date back hundreds of years. Okay, 500 years ago, the primitive guys were, you know, shaping hooks from bone and from shells in the shape of circle hooks because they realized how incredibly effective that shape was. And again, just to define, what are we talking about? Circle hook, there it is right there. As you can clearly see, you know, you've got that little tip of that barb is coming back in. It's forming a circle, as you can see right there. It's not your typical J hook that's coming down and going straight up. It's coming down and going right back in right there, just like that. So that's your typical shape of a circle hook. And they're really, really effective and really beneficial. And if you're not already fishing with circle hooks, you certainly better start because you're missing the boat. 
And I'll tell you, there was a day when this was a choice. You had an option, do I or do I not fish circle hooks? But today, that choice is gone. It's law. It's the law of the land that with many fisheries, um, you know, release fisheries, bottom fisheries, in many states, circle hooks are a must. Non-stainless, non-offset circle hooks. Non-stainless, meaning they're not stainless steel because a stainless steel hook will stay inside a fish and ultimately may kill that fish or it may you know, take forever to rust out. So a non-stainless steel circle hook is key. That's number one. Non-offset, what does that mean? Well, you can see there that that hook, and that's a tournament inline circle hook, it's straight right there. There's no curvature, it's just straight. That shank and the bend of the hook, they're straight with each other. I'll try and turn that around, maybe get a better look at it right there. Okay, it's straight, it's not offset. There are circle hooks, like for example, the sure set circle hook, which is in fact offset. And we're gonna talk about the differences in a minute. However, again, the benefits of circle hooks are long and really worthy. Let's talk about what those are. For starters, you of course tend to catch the fish in the corner of the mouth. And that's really important, and it was really important, and still is for commercial fishermen who have been using circle hooks for, for decades, okay? Why? Why do they want to, you know, not gut hook that fish? Well, just imagine if they're out there long lining, and I'm not saying you should support or not support commercial fishing. That's not what this is about, but it's happening. And if they've got long lines out there, and they hook a fish in the gut, potentially it's gonna die, and then they've got a dead fish rotting away on their long line, it attracts sharks, it's deteriorating, the quality of the fish is useless, and it's a big fat waste of time. On the other hand, if that circle hook hooks that fish in the corner of the mouth, he tends to stay alive. So you're able to keep that fish alive for longer. It's a better quality product as far as the commercial industry is concerned. More importantly, for commercial fishermen and the recreational sector, a circle hook requires no participation from the angler or really from the tackle to set the hook, okay? It sets itself, you know, the fish sets it. He eats the bait with the circle hook, he swims away, and that circle hook slowly slides up because of that indentation of the point. It doesn't catch in its gut or in its throat it slides up into its gullet, into its mouth there, and as the fish turns away, that circle hook tends to catch right in the corner of the mouth. Sometimes on top, sometimes on bottom, but usually in the corner of the mouth. I like to say these VMC inline tournament circle hooks catch that corner of the mouth 99% of the time. You know, it really is the truth. So it takes no participation. So novice anglers can be really successful with circle hooks. They're not swinging back. They don't have the time. When do I set the hook? When do I not set the hook? Additionally, deep water applications, deep dropping, snapper grouper fishing and you know tile fishing in deep water where you may, may not detect strikes. So many things, so many you know elements going on in such deep water. Whereas a hook that can set itself is a huge benefit in those deep drop arenas. Okay, that's something to remember. So those are just a couple of the benefits, okay? Fewer lost fish, believe it or not, you get a great hook set. A lot of guys were like hesitant. They're like, ah, oh, you know, I don't know. I don't want to use a circle hook. I'm going to lose the fish. I'm like, what? Why would you lose the fish? You, you got them. You've got a better chance of losing a fish on a J hook than you do on a circle hook. Why is that? Well, remember, with a J hook, you might have that fish gut hooked or somewhere in the throat. The line is then exiting the fish's mouth, abrading on the fish's teeth, potentially, depending on the, the species, and you could fray that line and bust that fish off. With a circle hook, it's in the corner of the fish's mouth 99.9% .9 of the time, right? We talked about that. That means the terminal tackle, the leader material, is not in the fish. It's outside the fish, okay? So that's not going to abrade. And that brings me to my next point, that by using circle hooks, we can downsize, we can scale down our terminal gear. Instead of potentially fishing 50-pound fluoro, diamond presentation fluoro, we can fish 30-pound diamond presentation fluoro. 
Lighter leader material equals a more natural presentation. A more natural presentation equals more bites. More bites equals more fish in the boat. Where's the confusion? I just don't see it. So keep that in mind. A lot of benefits, safer handling, not only of the hooks themselves, because obviously it's very hard to get that hook embedded in you when the point is pointed in, but handling the fish as well. When you get a fish in the boat, he's flipping around. You know, again, it's just an all around safer hook to fish. Now keep in mind, you know, we talked about this hook sliding out of the fish's mouth and hooking them right in the corner. Well, that means that the fish has to have the ability to swim away. You need a slow rod that just loads as that hook comes out of that fish and gets them right in the corner. That's gonna be the most effective tackle. If you're fishing a pool cue or a broomstick, something with no give whatsoever, you're gonna have a hard time sticking fish with a circle hook. So they really work much better you know, on slower rods is what we call them. You know, something that's gonna absorb all of that, it'll allow that hook to slide out, and it'll literally get that fish right in the corner of the mouth. Now, there's some applications where we don't use circle hooks. For example, trolling, okay? All of my trolling lures are hooked on J hooks. Couple of different reasons. Number one, I'm not really intending on releasing anything that I catch on the troll. I'm looking for dolphin, tunas, wahoos, etc. And most, if not all of those fish, you know, obviously are coming home for the dinner table. So I don't need a circle hook in that application, okay? Um, again, certain scenarios, it's just not the right hook. But for almost everything else, this is really the way to go. When, especially if you're gonna release the fish. Tarpon, forget it. If you're fishing, you know, for tarpon or if you're fishing a live crab on a hook for permit, they gotta be circle hooks, they really do. But don't think, because I think there used to be, you know, the mindset was, hey, I, can, I should only use a circle hook if I'm gonna release the fish. And that's not true, because like I said earlier, it does a great job at hooking fish. So when we're targeting mutton snappers, groupers, African pompano, all sorts of species on the wrecks, red snappers, all sorts of stuff, we're using circle hooks, okay, really, it's rare that we're not going to use a circle hook. That's how, you know, that's how effective that they really are. Now, keep in mind, in order for this to be effective as well, the hook needs to be exposed. So you don't want to take that circle hook and bury it inside the bait and completely hide it, right? Because it's not going to have the ability to come out of that fish's mouth and catch, which is why tournament sail fishermen, as an example, that are fishing inline, non-stainless steel, non-offset tournament hooks, circle hooks, okay? They're bridling that bait. Here's the bait. The hook never even goes in the bait. It's bridled with a little rigging band or a little piece of floss. There's a number of different ways to do it. Um, rigging bands seem to be the most popular, of course, with a little rigging needle. And the entire hook is completely exposed. So when that fish eats the bait, and as that bait gets pulled out of that fish's mouth, the hook itself has a great chance of hooking that fish. Whereas if the entire hook was buried in the bait, forget it, okay? You're, you're never gonna hook anything. So make sure that that hook is fully exposed. Now selecting the correct circle hook, both in size and style, you know, engage is a daunting task because there's a lot that goes into circle hooks. It's not as simple as, let me just grab a hook, right? So for starters, let's talk, you know, we, we talked about the inline on, because some fisheries require that. It's an absolute must. Tournament sail fishing, we just brought that up. You don't have a choice, so they make the choice for you because the inline hook has a much greater chance of hooking that fish in the corner of the mouth, whereas an offset hook, even though it's a circle hook, it's offset, okay? You can see it kind of, it's hopefully that shows up a little bit better there that has a greater chance of hooking the fish in the gut or in the throat. It's nowhere near as deadly as a J hook by any means, but it's not as conservation minded as an inline hook. So again, if you're absolutely looking for fish that you're gonna release, sailfish, tarpon, bonefish, permit, the list goes on, you know, inline circle hook's the way to go. If you're looking for fish that
sorry about that. If you're in turn looking for, you know, fish that you're going to keep, then obviously something offset is the way to go. Uh, it has the best of both worlds, or you certainly can fish the inline style again. Okay, so don't think that it has to be offset for you to potentially keep a fish because it doesn't. You know, like I said, the inline is really one of my favorite hooks all around. Now the gauge of the hook. This is another thing that's really, really important. This is really thin, okay? This is a Nemesis circle hook, okay, which has a much thicker gauge. This is my favorite hook for tuna fishing. They're very small but they're incredibly strong, incredibly strong. It's called a nemesis circle hook. So I can fish a really small hook and I can dangle just a small chunk or a live bait or whatever it is that I'm fishing with that and I can target really big strong fish, blackfin tunas and yellowfin tunas primarily. So small hook, heavier gauge, much stronger. And just to show you, uh, you know, another good little kind of comparison here, okay? This is the Nemesis Circle Hook in the 2.0 size. And this is the Tournament Circle Hook in the 2.0 size. They're both approximately the same size. But man, look at that difference in that gauge right there. Look at that. Can you see how much stronger that hook is right there? It's, an, it's really, really strong. However, I'm not going to use this in an environment where I don't need it. For example, I'm fishing a live shrimp for bonefish. Do I need a hook like that that can withstand a 50-pound yellowfin tuna or a 150-pound yellowfin tuna? Of course not. I need a really thin wire hook that's going to be, you know, keep that bait as natural and as lively as possible. Okay, keep that bait alive and, and the approach, the, the presentation is going to be as stealthy as possible. So think about what you're doing. You know, think about what you're targeting. And remember that it's all about balance. If I'm fishing 50 pound line, you know, a really thin, small hook like this, if I put a lot of heat on it, that hook may not hold up to 50 or 80 pound line. It just doesn't make sense. It's too weak of a hook. On the other hand, if I'm fishing 15 pound test, 16 pound test, something really light, I don't need a hook this heavy because I'm never going to apply that much heat on the line. So it's really a balance. It's a balance of tackle, target species, size of the bait that you're fishing. Because remember too, a small hook, a larger fish, you know, a small hook often will gut hook a large fish. But a big circle hook, you may have a hard time hooking small fish. So again, it's all about balance, okay? Remember that. Finally, regardless of whatever circle hook you use, Make sure you tie it on with a loop knot, a small little loop knot. That's going to provide the greatest mobility to that circle hook, regardless of size, okay? And it'll allow that hook to turn and catch that fish in the corner of the mouth the way it was designed to. So at the end of the day, if you're not already fishing circle hooks, I'll tell you what, you're like I said earlier, you're missing the boat. You absolutely need to incorporate circle hooks into your arsenal. Uh, VMC, you know, my choice of hook for many, many years. They've got a variety of different style circle hooks for every application that's out there. You know, the most recent is really cool. It's a tournament inline circle hook, but it has something called a B-lock. And what that is, is it's just that it's the same hook, but it's got a little piece of heavy mono right there. It's actually like two pieces. I don't know if you can kind of see it right there. And they're fixed into position right there on the bend of that hook. So when I embed a live bait on there, the bait can't go up the shank and the hook can't turn and get into the bait because that has happened. That's, that's you know, a common occurrence. Not really common, but it happens. Okay. So by having that B-lock, it prevents that bait from sliding up on the shank. A real nice feature, you know, on an already great hook. So that's it. You know, hopefully you picked up a couple of tips that are gonna help you out. Remember, check out our Instagram feed here for all of the other seminars. Check out our YouTube page. I'm fishing all day tomorrow. I'm looking forward for you getting out on the water this holiday weekend as well. And we'll see you next Thursday. Thanks for tuning in. Really appreciate it.